welcome to my studio again. It's a beautiful autumn, sunny autumn day here in Adelaide. And I'm going to be having a little play with this snippet of hibiscus bush that we um, picked whilst taking our dog for a little walk. And I've got a couple of photographs taken of the bush as well and these um, um, little flowers. But I'm going to show you how I have a little play trying to make a painting and show you today also how to um, try incorporating the leaves in your work. So this should be a bit of fun. So let's get ready and get into the painting. Before I start my painting today, I'm going to have a little play first with the leaves from the hibiscus. I have done um, incorporating leaf stamping in paintings before and I do this with vine leaves because vine leaves have got beautiful veins on the back which you can use for stamping but they also um, sit very flat which makes them easy to do a stamping with on your work. However, because I'm going to be painting this hibiscus um, and here's a picture um, taken on our walks that have got this same uh, flower here obviously blown up very big but you can see the amount of foliage here I'd like to just try and be able to capture this type of uh, bush but maybe uh, be, be a bit creative with uh, using these leaves the back of these leaves is fine for stamping because they have got these raised veins but what they don't do and I've had a little play already they don't sit flat so it's a little bit hit and miss when you put them on your painting. So <clears throat> the idea would be to have a little play first because if they really won't behave, I don't want to have got a bit of a painting going, decided to put them in it and then uh, don't enjoy what it is that I've got uh, from the marks. Now, when you're going to be trying to stamp with the leaves, in fact, stamp with anything using watercolor, it obviously can't be too wet because if it's too wet, um, you're just going to get a blobby looking um, mark here where the paint is too fluid and is filled in all around the veins. So you really want it to be a creamy mixture. And what I tend to like to do is to try and put a bit of a variety of color. Uh, let's continue with this little one here. Uh, a variety of color on the back of the leaf, hit and miss, doesn't really matter um, what bit goes where, but keeping it fairly dry. So look, rinsing my brush off, taking a lot of the moisture off, dipping in for another colour. And just putting that on. Let's do one more. What will I do for this one? Um, let's go with a bit of gold. So I've got a blue, a green, and... A bit of gold when you paint this on the back of the leaf you can see it's a, it acts a little bit as a resist uh, so you can't always see what you've got there you've just got to uh, be pleased with what you get when you stamp it so putting it now face down onto my piece of watercolor paper and pressing it down perhaps with this tissue because as I say these won't stay flat even pressing them down like this, they want to raise up. And then take the leaf off and see what it is that you've, you've got. That's quite nice. Now, when you put it into a painting, if you don't want them to look really neat, you can mess them up. And if they come out and they look a little bit messed up already, you could neaten them up. So, you know, it's really quite versatile, but I could add a bit of water to this paint now and decide just to loosen that up so perhaps he's going to sit amongst my painting better. Um, or I may wish to change the shape of something that I've done so I can just um, add a bit more paint, negatively paint around some. And what is this doing? Is this something I can't paint? No. What this is doing is mean I'm loosening up, I'm having some creative um, time with my painting, doing things that um, 
you're going with mark making that you're not in total control of and just seeing if you can turn it into something. And it's really quite um, a, a nice way of doing a painting without being um, really serious about it and just seeing if something works out. So in other words, allowing yourself to play. So I think with those leaves, if I'm careful with the pressing down, I think I will be able to get uh, some interesting marks. So now I'm going to try and put together a little bit of a composition. That's my next step and then incorporate my stamping of my leaves. So let's see how I go. I've used my um, little snippets from the bush of the hibiscus and also looking at the two photographs that I printed out um, just to, to do a little bit of drawing to work out a composition. I want to use some masking fluid because these little um, stamens and little fine uh, bits on the stamens here from this central um, part here, whatever it is, uh, is very fine. And I've got them going out into the background and I'd like to be able to retain um, those marks, uh, be able to paint freely over them for all the um, greenery. So I'm going to mask out um, the little parts on here and here and on this one here. And I think that's about all the masking I've got to do. So that's my next step. Little speckles that can read these. I'm not even putting them in the right spots. It really doesn't matter as long as I've got something that if I'm painting dark behind it, I'll have some blobs that have been kept white. That's the idea. The tricky thing about painting the hibiscus when you're going to be adding a lot of greenery is the fact that the flowers themselves are red and red and green on the colour wheel are opposite. So if I get my red mixing in with my green, I'm going to end up with greyed down colour, which I don't want to do. So there's parts of this that are going to need this masking fluid. You can see where I've put it down on the three stamens here which means I'm going to at least be able to retain the white of the paper when I've painted everything else and paint them last. Some little dots. Um, do I need the little strokes? Probably I should have done the little strokes as well. Maybe I'll do a few. Let's just see if I can even do them now. They're probably not fine enough. So it doesn't matter if they're not all there. There's something. There we are. I'm going to leave it at that. So now I've got to let that masking fluid dry, which whilst it's drying, I can make up my colour selection for my painting. Then I'm going to be uh, ready to go. Most of the painting is really just... Uh, pinks and greens, a bit of dark red for those centres and a tiny little bit of yellow for these little parts on the ends here. So the yellow part's going to be pretty easy to um, work out. So I'm just going to use a warm yellow. This is sort of a bit like cadmium yellow, I think. This is actually da Vinci Marigold, but when you look it up with the pigment number, it's... Um, cadmium yellow or similar to cadmium yellow so I'm going to go with that which is a nice warm yellow for those dots I could have even because I'm probably going to be using this in my greenery have even used quin gold but I probably would like a combination of those two yellows so quin gold and this warm yellow here as far as the pinks go, well, it'd be nice to put a bit of opera in this. Opera pink, opera rose, depending on what um, manufacturer it is. But it's a fluoro pink. It would make a really nice um, choice for this. And combine it with, I think, um, a bit of permanent rose 
four, permanent rows for the veins in the flower. I think that would do quite well. And then for these really, really dark centers here, I'm thinking alizarin crimson. I have seen hibiscus, well, there's many types of hibiscus that you can get, but I've seen hibiscus that are not just solidly looking centers like this. Um, but these particular, this particular bush, this is what it looks like. So there I've got my two yellows, I've got two pinks, I've got a deep um, dark red being alizarin crimson. And so now it's just the greenery. Well, when I did my little swatches for the um, leaves here, I used some cream gold and I put in some phthalo -y blue colour on the back of the leaves as well. So that's a nice leaf colour combination there. I could darken it up with some indigo for the dark parts. Really down into the deep parts of the um, greenery. I put that queen gold in with it. And get something really dark. Um, what else? I did use some of this green gold. I need to look up again which green gold this is. I think that is Daniel Smith's green gold. That green gold mixed with the indigo is rather nice, really nice for a dark green. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. So as far as my colours for this work, of which of course I always say I can change my mind, but for now this is what I'm going to do. Quinacridone gold, warm yellow, I'm going to say it's, I'm pretty sure this is marigold da Vinci paints, opera pink, permanent rose, permanent alizarin crimson, indigo, green, gold, and make sure I can just see exactly these colors, the indigo, and Windsor blue green shade, which is a phthalo blue. Okay clean up the bit of mess I've made here doing those swatches and my masking fluid might be dry and I'm going to be ready to make a start. My masking fluid is dry so I'm ready to go. I've got my leaves ready here. I've worked my colours out. I like to paint wet into wet but two things. If I wet the whole paper the greenery being a colour opposite to the pink is going to get near my flower, so I don't want that. So I'm going to have to wet just around the petals. Secondly, if I want to do the stamping, it doesn't work. We talked about it needing to be um, thicker paint. So it's certainly not going to work so well sticking it into wet paper. So I'm thinking of water, uh, wetting just around the petals. So anywhere that can be green can be wet. But as I get down to perhaps this area over here where I might try the stamping, I will leave it dry. Now this type of, um, you know, having, having fun using things like the leaves, painting um, like this can be a bit hit and miss, but it could turn out really well. It might not turn out, but I will be enjoying the process of trying. And really, that's what painting is all about. Trying to be creative and enjoying yourself. So as I'm painting um, around these petals, I can see really what that bit of composition is going to look like because the water, you know, is a bit like wet paint. 
you can just see what you've got left. Make sure images stand out, your subjects stand out more. Um, and I'm getting a feel for the painting. I'm getting a feel for how it's going to be when I start adding the pigment. So I take my time when I'm doing this uh, wetting, hoping this is dry, going over the top of the masking fluid is safe. Um, and this is going to allow this greenery to be flowy and those colors that I've chosen mix on the paper. So this is not wasted time to um, put this water down because it's thinking time. All of it is thinking time. So this is gonna be green in here. Now I've got to think about this dry area over here. What am I going to do for that stamping? Um, this must be around here, down here. So I'll have to just try and find my way over here. I may well have to use um, uh, the spray bottle or... Now I can see where the greenery is going to go around these um, petal shapes. I've had my bit of thinking time. My arm's already warmed up for doing the painting. And let's just see. So going back now to those um, colors and switch into a slightly smaller brush because these hold a fair bit of um, moisture. I've already got moisture on the paper here. So <clears throat> I don't want it to be overly wet. So I've got the green, I've got the gold, I've got the blue and the indigo. And I'm just going to try and drop these in and let's see what type of greenery we get. I'm not after making leaves. The leaves are going to um, possibly pop out from the background depending what I do after this first wash has dried. So let's just fill in here, anywhere that's got to be greenery. So I'll just put this on a little bit of video only so I can just concentrate on what it is um, that I need to turn this into foliage. This dry bit here now which is where I've decided to have a go at doing the stamping so that's my next bit and see if I can incorporate it into the rest of this here um, I have to tell you I haven't done it like this before so this is a good um, experiment for me too so I'm going to get that flat brush and I'm going to use my colors here my same colors here and my bit of wax paper um, and uh, let's just tear a little bit off here. It's my wax paper here. 
and paint this thick, creamy consistency paint on the veins on the back. This can always be the little bit of scary bit because you don't know when you stick this on the painting quite what you're going to get. We did the little tester, but that doesn't guarantee what it's going to look like when it goes on the painting. Um, <clears throat> but just got to do it. Just see if I can quickly take that bit of paint off my fingers. See if I could try not to get marks that I don't want on my painting. And I'll flip him over. I might even try it with this piece of wax paper. And I'll put that there. And I can press down then on the piece of wax paper and roll that um, stamping. Lift him up. That's not too bad. So let's quickly get a different size. You can use half a leaf. Um, don't have to keep getting different size leaves, but let's put a different shape here. Worst thing, as I say, is this thing with the fingers. I'm trying not to mess up my loose background wash that I've already got down. So it's a different size gone down there. Some of it's gone into the wet over here, which is probably quite nice. Hopefully that will just smooth it around. That's good. And I really want to do one more. Um, Just thinking about the shape of this, I might have him come out over here. Nope, I might like the big one again. I don't have to work quite as quickly because this is dry here. Um, so I've got playing time. So let's uh, ship my painting along a tiny bit while I just get a bit of room here. onto these veins and let's have another look I might go right over there press it down to try and get the color off lift up my bit of wax paper lift off my leaf and I'm quite happy with that but I don't want to leave them just like that so I'm going to quickly get this bit of paint again off my fingers and with the towel I'm going to mess these around a tiny bit just so that they look like they belong um, quite sure I don't want to lose all of the shape um, just trying to work out what size brush here to do this with I've got some splotches here where the stampings added a little bit that I didn't do from bits on the paper or dirty fingers so I'll just add a wee bit of paint in here to make these look like when these are dry if you don't want these white spaces you can paint over them carefully so if I didn't really want this to be this white in here I could just add a bit of this blue just get these to meld a bit into the background 
So now I've definitely got real looking leaves here and I've got just the colour of leaves up here. So I've got to let this dry now because I've got to be able to create more depth um, and negatively paint some foliage in there, paint the flowers, but I need all of this to dry. So I'll come back when I can do some more to it. Um, it's not wasted drying time for me because I can start editing the first part of my video while this is doing this. And if it dries as it's looking now, I'd be rather happy with how those that stamping has come out. So I'll do a big clean up before I can then go on anyway. My painting is just about dry, but I'm looking at my stamping of the leaves down here and I'm trying to imagine how I'm going to incorporate it and join it up here. So I was thinking maybe of trying another couple, but keeping it perhaps not quite as defined so that there's a step between the stamped leaves and what I'm going to paint up here, but I don't know about this, but this I've made this very wet paint on this one so it might not be as detailed as that but it might give me a bit of a lead in up here so when you paint and you look after something is dried and uh, you look at what you've got you know sometimes you have to make an adjustment to what you first thought you might be doing so for me that is just adding a wee bit more paint here trying to uh, see how I'm going to incorporate um, these leaves. I had a really small one here somewhere. Not sure what's happened to him. Oh, there he is. Um, wow, that looks nice in the palette even, that colour. Let's just get this little one here. So I'm going a lot wetter than... Um, I told you when I first put the leaves down because I really don't mind if this just makes a fairly solid looking um, shape um, just because I'm not quite sure how to incorporate the big space that I had there so I'm thinking maybe this might be easier it may not have been necessary um, Look, using the same one and stamping twice. Mm, quite like that. This is what playing is supposed to be like. Not absolutely sure what you're going to get. But playing and just seeing, seeing what happens. So let's just soften this colour a little bit. This one here is a little heavy. So I don't know whether I could lift a little bit from him, change his colour a wee bit. Just move that up a little bit. Let's just put a bit more gold on this one because it's very blue looking. And just see if I can now incorporate this up into the background a little. So it's reacting, which is what we have to do most of the time in watercolour, is reacting to what's happened before. What happened to give you certain marks? Do you like them? Are you going to leave them alone? Or are you going to enhance, change, add or subtract? That's basically what uh, what we have to do with most of our paintings. I'm not totally happy with how solid that bit is there compared to this bit down here, but maybe I don't need to make a decision about that right now until I've got more paint on somewhere else. So I'm going to have to just stop again, I think, and just get all this dirt dirty paint off of my fingers before I can carry on. 
I feel like now they're leading more up into my um, background up here. I'll leave it at that for now and let that little bit dry while I wash my very dirty hands. I'll take a bit more. It's very strong, that um, the Windsor Blue Green Shade, which is a phthalo blue, is a very, very strong staining colour, as you can tell from the fingers. But you could, look, I'm lightening it. Every time I take a bit more paint from it, I'm lightening it and I'm adding it. I'm not wasting it. I'm just adding it in the painting. But let's have a little clean up. I've cleaned my palette, changed my water because I'm ready to paint pink, the pink and red now. And so I don't want the contamination of the green anywhere. So um, best to start off with things clean. I'm going to start with this flower at the top here, which is a bit like uh, the one I've got um, in front of me here. It's more closed up. Just to find my way with what the flowers need to look like. Because he's not the star of the show, it's a good one to um, make the start on. Um, I don't really like that little bit of masking fluid that's just here. Um, if you take the masking fluid off, uh, too soon, it's not a good idea because I just may still want to paint dark around some of these. But I actually want this petal here to be on top of that uh, stamen there. So I'll just take a bit of my pencil mark off there. And I took a wee bit of the masking fluid off there. Now here I can paint wet into wet if I want because my greenery is all dry. So if I only wet the flowers, um, if I just wet the flowers, it's not going to go out into the greenery. I'm just going to find my way with these a little because, um, you know, you've just got to go slowly just to get an idea of how they're going to be. So there's water on one petal. It's a lot of water because of the mop brush. I'll just soak a wee bit of it up. And I'm going to try that opera. Let's find my colour chart again. The opera and the permanent rose to do the flowers. So I'll we'll just go to the slightly smaller brush because it holds less water, less pigment. And get the two pinks. And just having a look. I haven't got a photograph of this, so I've got to look at the real thing to get an idea of how this is going to. This particular one, the, the buds are not open, um, the flower's not fully open. So it's uh, got petals folded over on petals. But it's a good way to find your way with a, with a flower that's not quite so important because that way then by the time you get to paint the, uh, the more in focus ones, you've got an idea what you're going to do. So I'm just using the two pinks here. Some on dry, some on wet. In fact, that's all going to meld into one anyway. So this is what um, finding your way does. Am I going to paint on dry? Am I going to paint on wet? So I'm really just adding the pinks here and it's actually all melding into every single petal. So this is sort of like the first wash on the flowers. And then you come and redefine areas after that first wash is dried. If 
The background wash has not been really, really neat around the edges of the flower. That is something that I tidy up when I try and do something a bit more with the greenery. So I'm happy just to start off with that one there, find my way. Can't really do much unless I do take that masking fluid off, but for now I'm going to leave that on there. So let's have a look at one that is uh, more in focus, sort of like this one down here. I could paint either on dry, which means the paint's not going to go anywhere, that I'm not moving it around. Oops. This is just the opera. And I'll sneak a little bit of the permanent rose in it as well. I'm not doing the veins um, on the petals. I'm really just getting some pink down. So this is going to be really a bit repetitive. Um, so I think I'll come back to you when I'm ready to paint the dark part of the centers. But for now, I'll just move around those three flowers and get this pink um, petals done. dry to move this along a little bit so I can uh, work on a center here I wouldn't be putting in the veins uh, at this stage but I'm going to try that dark center so for that I use the um, permanent alizarin crimson so I'll get a nice rich mixture of that over here and have a look at uh, either the real flower here or the photo that I've got in front of me here, which is not a bad um, shape for this one here. So I'll just put it down and I'm going to leave um, you can see I've got a can't talk and paint at the same time for this bit. Um, so just watch me put down these centers here with this alizarin. It's a nice juicy mixture because this is very dark and if you put it down too pale, you've only got to go over it again. So I think you might as well just go in for a nice juicy mixture. Um, it could even be darker than this. But I'll see what it looks like when it's dried. And for the veins here, I will leave the underwash for a vein. So negatively paint for a vein where I can. And just bring this center out. I can go over the top of the masking fluid, it's fine. Just following the sort of shapes that they look like. That alizarin crimson does dark and dry, a little bit dull looking, so it may well need a bit of something else on there if it looks a bit too faded. Just leave a few pale lines in between. just to resemble a vein. And I can even use the paint of this, alizarin crimson, to do a vein if I want to. So, But I could dip into the permanent rose, join it up with the alizarin, 
and come out this way for a vein. And even mess it up a tiny bit so it's not too pristine. Don't really need perfect looking marks, you just want attractive looking, attractive looking mark. So that's how I'm going to move around, uh, do this one up here, put some extra red in here. And then it's a case of removing the masking fluid to do the fine parts and the yellow stamen bits on the ends. But being, first of all, satisfied that you've got enough dark paint around. So um, I will just work on these petals until I think there's enough paint, whoops, enough paint in those before I uh, start on some of the greenery at the back. So then I could think about taking off the masking fluid. So if you put lines down, it's nice to get back to them reasonably quickly with some, or just a damp brush, just so that they don't look too hard lined and plastered on. So rinse off my brush, take off the excess, excess moisture and just mess them around just a tiny little bit. Um, just so they look a little bit, uh, um, not, not so painted on. Same here. So I'll move around my flowers now just finishing off all the pinks and the reds before uh, I show you how I might strengthen up the background. And that's going to be very dependent on how these pinks look against it as to whether they need very much, whether it needs much or not. It's very hard to make all of the decisions whilst you've got a lot of things that are not painted uh, because the next part decides what leads on to the next part. enough pink on here for now. Uh, it's dry. I could just have a little look at putting some veins on or I could work on the greenery first. Um, I think I might just darken up the greenery. I don't want to make this a long video. Um, I really wanted to show you the stamping and how to have a little play with this but I just need to do something in, in uh, the background here to add a bit more depth. Um, so using the same colours really that I used before is the best way to go. So luckily I have my swatch here so I don't have to 
guess what I've used. I've got it all um, documented here. So quickly clean up the pink from the palette. Um, just mash with green goes a little bit um, murky, but I certainly do want the green making the pink go murky. But we'll just clean that up. And then we'll mix up some more greens. And I'll just do a little bit uh, in the background here. Um, adding a wee bit in here. And then I will take off this masking fluid and paint that last little bit of them there. So let me see how I go um, getting a little bit of depth in here. And I'll get back to you to let you know what we're going to do with these. Dried off the background. I think I've done enough with the um, greenery, the foliage. Incorporating this stamping into the background, getting a bit of darks behind the flowers, just being suggestive of um, depth in the um, foliage without painting every leaf. And now I'm going to take off this masking fluid. Um, this is always the big reveal to see what sort of shapes it is that you've left with the masking fluid that you've now got to tidy up and turn into what it is that you want. Um, I tend to find the lines a little bit bigger than I want but then I can creep in on them to make them a little bit smaller. So there's the masking fluid off. So really that just leaves me a few minutes now to uh, 
do these centers and uh, put some little yellow dots on there and I think we're just about done. So I'll just have one more clean up of the palette. I like to pa paint um, clean where I can because it just means I won't get to muck um, easily on what I'm doing. So a quick clean up of that and we'll come back and paint these centers. Right. So ready to have a little go and see what it is. Uh, and I can neaten up my masking fluid and paint these centers. So here where my masking fluid has gone down a wee bit um, too close here. Small brush now, I've swapped down to about a number two here. Because I only want to put, I want to be in control, so I don't want a lot of water. And a small stroke. So first of all, I want to just get rid of this part there. Shorten that stem. Of the stain a, a little bit there. I even darken it up, which I did on these here, with a tiny bit of that phthalo blue colour in with the alizarin crimson makes a very, very dark purple. Makes the red very dark and helps sit and stain them into, right down deep into the flower. I'll leave that one there to dry just for a second. This one here, this is just a wee bit uh, too fat where the masking fluids come off. So if I just carefully with my number two brush, neaten up the sides of it here, I think I'll just make it a wee bit smaller. And even as it comes out down here, Take a little bit of the pink, make this a wee bit smaller there. Just before I start painting the ends of them, it's best to get the width of them how you want. And this one up here is a little bit jaggy just there. And just neaten him up. So this is not a botanical painting. This is just capturing in a loose way this little snippet snipping of the hibiscus. Okay, so now these centers, they are really just the same sort of color as the petals coming out deeper from down here deeper from the center and fading out as they go up bit of the paint down that's a bit of the permanent rose and just drag it down towards the end it's not showing up particularly well on this one so I may well have to either let that dry try and get a bit along the edge of it might be enough or darken it up. This is where you have to react to really what has happened 
in your process along the way. And this one over here, that's sort of a bit hidden, he was from the one that wasn't quite open. Oh, there'd be a pale. Coming out from in there, tucked in behind, tucked in behind a petal. A little bit messy up here. Uh, I'll have to probably just go around that with a little bit of the greenery. Um, the good thing about painting the loose suggestive foliage is you can tidy up the edges by putting more dark paint around. I'm not going to spend a long time tidying this up because um, it would be a long video, but let's just quickly just tidy up this one here. Rinse my brush, soften the bit of paint that I've just put down. It is looking a little bit hard there. So if you get a line that won't shift, Rather than scrub at it, I put a bit more paint down and get that to bleed away. Um, and I just realised why it was a hard line, because I'm using too small a brush. If you use too small a brush, not a lot of liquid, the paint will go down and make a line, a hard mark. It's harder to shift. If you use a bigger brush, um, your paint is more, it's gone down in a soft way. But there we are, that's that. So let's just see now, we've got to do something with these here. So my small brush, now when I look at them here, they're very pale with a, um, yellow dot on the end. Now, you could just use a watercolour pencil for this. I'm not sure if I've got one here that's maybe just right. Let me just have a little look here. I could almost get by with that magenta colour versus that red one. Let's just have a little look. So I'll do a practice on this one over here. It's easy to make a fine mark with something with a point on like this. Could even put some red in it as well. Just to give that look of the fine lines. Bit more control than doing it with a paintbrush. It's still watercolour because it's got uh, the, these are watercolour pencils. I could add water to this and it's just pigment then. Um, and this one over here, same thing. If I'd put the masking fluid down a little neater, taking my time, which is not always easy to do when you're doing it for a demo. That will do, and the bigger marks that are um, the little bobbles that are on the end, I'll do that with paint for the permanent rows. I only really want a bit on the tip of my brush. This brush is starting to get a bit worn. Um, Something like that. That one's a little lost down there, doesn't matter quite so much. They have got slightly thicker stems on these. 
or it can just be a little bit lost down there because I haven't left enough masking fluid to do it. Straighten up this, and now I've just got to do the little yellow ends. So the cadmium yellow or the marigold, as this colour is called for me, it's fairly opaque. Take off some moisture off the end of my brush here because I really just want the paint only on the tips. And these are fine little dots. And say you could do this with the quinacridone gold as well, or you could do both. Because I use the watercolour pencil here, that's not going to bleed as much as if I had done these little fine lines with paint. That would still be wet. But the watercolour pencil is not going to activate with this much added. Little yellow dots help fill in any extra white spaces. There seems to be a lot of these little pollen dots. They help add another colour to the painting as well. And if I wanted to make a little bit darker colour, I could go into the gold. couple of bits of that on. Right, I think I'm done. I think that's uh, captured the essence of this little um, piece of the hibiscus bush that we bought home. I um, hope you've enjoyed watching that little bit of um, fun painting trying out the stamping, keeping your paint um, not too wet when you're trying to stamp off the back of a leaf and then trying to incorporate it into the rest of the painting there. And um, yeah, I think that's probably worked okay. So thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.